Good evening. Once again, I'm Stephanie Rule. Fierce battles continue across Ukraine as Russia's invasion now enters day 37. U.S. military officials say that over the last 24 hours, Russia has increased its airstrikes on several cities and continues to threaten the area around the capital of Kyiv, despite a pledge to pull back from the area. Russia has repeatedly lied about its intentions. According to our intelligence, Russian units are not withdrawing, but repositioning. The U.S. and its allies are now trying to figure out Putin's next move. Earlier today, President Biden weighed in on that. He seems to be self-isolated, and there's some indication that he has... Um, fired or put under house arrest some of his advisors. Um, but I, I, I don't want to put too much stock in that at this time because we don't have that much hard evidence. Thus far, there is no clear evidence that he's pulling all of his forces out of Kiev. There is also evidence that he is beefing up his troops down in the Donbass area. Tonight, the White House has released more intelligence about Putin and his forces. One official telling NBC that some senior Russian government officials were not on the same page as Putin about the invasion entirely. NBC's Richard Engel is in Ukraine with the latest on Russia's struggle to control the country. Russia's military has suffered shocking setbacks in Ukraine, some self-inflicted. But today may be one of the biggest yet. Ukraine's state nuclear company says two columns of Russian troops left the Chernobyl nuclear disaster site, still contaminated from the 1986 meltdown. The company said the Russians are leaving after digging trenches in the contaminated soil and receiving significant doses of radiation. The Russian military has said radiation levels have remained within a normal range in the area. Russia is already striking again near the capital, destroying this warehouse. Ukraine's President Zelensky, who spoke with President Biden late yesterday, says he needs more American help to defend his country, including fighter jets and tanks. U.S. aid is essential for us, he said, while President Putin is making new economic threats, saying unfriendly countries, which include Europe and the United States, must pay for Russian natural gas in rubles in Russian banks by tomorrow or risk being cut off. Well, that's what Putin demanded. But so far, European leaders are pushing back on his demands and not yet paying in rubles. We'll have more on that in a moment. The war in Ukraine has also had an impact on gas prices, of course, here at home. Today, President Biden announced a plan to release one million barrels of oil a day for the next 180 days from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. It is the largest release since its creation. Our prices are rising because of Putin's action. There isn't enough supply. And the bottom line is, if we want lower gas prices, we need to have a more oil supply right now. Meanwhile, we're also following the latest in the January 6th investigation. Trump's son-in-law and former White House advisor Jared Kushner gave a voluntary interview to the House Select Committee, 